Hey everyone, this is Bad But Sweaty, and with the NDA finally lifted, I can now cover everything that is coming with the release of Season 17. And let me tell you, there are some huge things in this update. The most notable of these being a new shotgun, a new elimination map, and a multitude of changes to the leaderboards. So, without any delay, let's get started. Starting off, we have the new weapon, the Taiga 21. I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation. It is a semi-automatic shotgun with a 12 round drum mag that fires a new ammo type, the combat shell, at a moderately fast rate. This weapon's respectable fire rate and extremely high damage makes for a lethal combination that rivals even the best of machine guns in close quarters. But its performance at medium and long range leaves something to be desired in that matchup. All in all, the Taiga may just end up being your best friend against machine guns, that is, if you can get around your range constraints without your head spontaneously exploding. All I'm hoping is that this weapon won't inflict a stun after you get hit by it. I know it's a shotgun, and all shotguns in Vigor have the ability to stun, but greatly limiting one's mobility and ability to fire back against this pellet hose of death would only be fun for the user, while the player on the receiving end will likely be left with the feeling of being cheated. With the amount of damage it can dish out in a single second, you may as well toss a grenade at your feet because there is no way in hell you're not going to die if you get stunned. Next up, the new elimination map will be Myron, and while I'm always happy to see more content being added to the game, I only hope it performs better as an elim map than it does for shootout or encounters. I unfortunately don't have any footage of this map, but considering it's already a shootout and encounter map, this isn't a huge loss as we've already had a couple of seasons with it. An interesting feature that I'm looking forward to seeing in action is booster tickets. These can be found in the Outlands tab of your shelter and are consumable boosters that you can obtain from crates and battle passes. Additionally, there are two types of these boosters, Personal and Lobby. Personal tickets, as the name suggests, apply only to you when you use one, whereas Lobby tickets apply to, you guessed it, the entire lobby. With that being said, let's go over the effect of each individual ticket, starting with the Personal tickets. First, we have Double XP tickets. These will offer you double XP for 24 hours. You can use multiple tickets to stack the time, though I'm not sure why you would due to the lack of efficiency in this method, and the timer will be paused if an official double XP event is active. Next, the double part tickets. These are usable in encounters and will double all weapon and consumable parts you retrieve from that encounter. Similarly, the double resource tickets will double all resources you retrieve from an encounter. Moving on to lobby tickets, we have all the standard boosts you'd find in the lobby screen, such as more loot, better crate and insurance for encounters, better rewards for shootout, and lastly, score boost and loadout tickets for elimination. Booster tickets will not replace the crown bought boosters, Instead, they will be used in tandem with one another, and I'm very interested to see how this feature plays out in the new season. Now, let's talk about the thing every sweat lord and their mother will be ecstatic about. The leaderboard expansion. Numerous changes have been made to the leaderboards, but let's start off with the addition of elimination and shootout leaderboards. I don't know what statistics will be on these because you need to play a few matches of each mode for them to be shown, but I'm extremely excited nonetheless. 
The second huge change to the leaderboards is the addition of weekly and seasonal leaderboards. These will have the same stats as their all-time counterparts, but will reset after the amount of time listed on them. The last large addition to the leaderboards comes in the form of a skill rating that will be assigned to you based on how well you played in previous matches. I don't know what effect this will have on gameplay, if any at all. It could just be another way for players to flex their skill. I only hope that it's not a precursor to skill-based matchmaking. All the stats we've come to know and love, or hate, make a return with Season 17. But it's the new stats that I really want to talk about here. The devs added six new stats for encounters, and those include matches survived, a kill-death ratio, hallelujah, headshots, hit points healed, became threat, and killed threats. If you've been paying any attention to the community over the last couple of years, you will probably recognize a lot of these stats from community suggestions. I know for a fact that players have been begging for threat and headshot trackers for a long time now, while I've personally been more interested in lobbying for a kill-death ratio. Sadly, these new stats will only track data starting from the date that they are added, with the exception of the kill-death ratio and encounters survived stats, so your previous 100,000 health healed won't count towards them. However, the community has been asking for additions to the leaderboards ever since they came out in Season 3, and the devs delivered in a big way here so I don't think a single soul will be disappointed with the work that they put in on this project. There will of course be a new battle pass with Season 17, and if you know me well, you know that I don't care all that much about this. But it looks to be Halloween themed with some military elements sprinkled throughout, and the Taiga plan is at level 45 in the pass. I will be going over the battle pass in more detail at a later date. There will unfortunately be no new consumable coming with Season 17, and the devs touched on why in DevStream 95. After a viewer asked about possible Season 17 consumables, saying, We are not planning a consumable for Season 17, because we came to the conclusion, after considering feedback from the community, that the consumables we currently have provide plenty of tactical options, so we decided to spend those development resources elsewhere. Lastly, seasonal challenges seem to be unchanged this season, but Chris could have just gotten unlucky and not rolled any new ones that may have been added. And that's everything that's coming with Season 17. Overall, I'm liking what I'm seeing with this season. The addition of another elimination map and the greatly improved leaderboards are fantastic incentives for people to keep playing the game, and adding more ways to counter the current meta is never a bad idea in my opinion. With all that being said, this has been Bad But Sweaty from the Christopher Beast channel. Have a nice day.